Hey there, Pokemon fans. In today's video, we're going to be covering some of the exciting news that was revealed at the World Championships in Yokohama, Japan. I'm going to be giving you my thoughts on all of the cool information that was revealed there, as well as how I think the pieces of that puzzle are going to fit together in future formats of Pokemon TCG. So stick around and find out here on The Shuffle Squad. Be sure to check out all of the sponsors of the Shuffle Squad, whether you're looking for graded cards, you're looking for singles, sealed, we have all affiliate codes with all of our great sponsors, so be sure to check them out in the description below. Thank you so much for supporting us. At the end of the Pokemon World Championships in 2023 in the closing ceremony, a new trailer showed us brand new cards and a mechanic for the Pokemon TCG. And let me tell you, it's going to be epic. These cards come with new ancient or future mechanics, which might be similar to how rapid strike and single strike cards function on which specific labeled cards work with other ancient and future cards. This is a great opportunity to add some new strategies to the deck. Let's cover some of the cards that were revealed. We're going to first take a look at Iron Valiant EX and Roaring Moon EX. These were the two main cards featured on the cover of the Japanese sets of Ancient Roar and Future Flash and the worldwide set Paradox Rift. So not only will they have some amazing new cards to play with, but they also look great too. Taking a look at Iron Valiant EX, it does have the Tachani Bits ability, and sorry if I mispronounced that, but once during your turn, when this Pokemon moves from your bench to your active spot, you may put two damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon, which could be really good in decks like Lost Box that would stick around after even the rotation that we'll get possibly in April. Uh, but I think that this holds true for a lot of other decks that maybe won't see some play in the meta. Now, what's nice right now is that we see that it's a psychic type, but also not weak to dark Pokemon, which is really great here because Gardevoir does have that squealing issue that it's weak to a lot of dark Pokemon. Now we do see the laser blade attack, which is kind of a fall flat attack. I don't see anything super exciting about this part, but it does say during this next turn, this Pokemon can attack. Now I would only imagine that being that it has two retreat costs, that this card might have a way of retreating a little bit easier based on the set and how that ability works. So Laser Blade inevitably could be reset pretty easily. The next main card we'll look at is Roaring Moon EX. Now it does have two pretty cool attacks here and 230 HP. Now if we look back at Iron Valiant, 220 HP, not great, but again, these cards are basic Pokemon. If we looked at the reveal from the prior World Championships, we did get Maridon EX and Coridon EX, which had similar HP. Now the first attack here, Frenzied Gouging, shows two darkness and one colorless for the attack cost, and it does state, knock out your opponent's active Pokemon. If your opponent's active Pokemon is knocked out in this way, this Pokemon does 200 damage to itself. Now that's pretty bad being that there's only going to be 30 HP left, but it does mean that you could potentially take a 2, maybe even a 3 prize knockout here. Loading up for that energy cost could be a little bad, but again, putting this in something like a Lost Box deck, you could add this over and just Mirage Gate to it. Now there are other ways that you can add HP to this Pokemon. So doing that, we would look at Bravery Charm, being that this is a basic Pokemon. So we could add an extra 50 HP, giving it sustainably 80 HP after that attack is used. If we do ever get a supporter that maybe picks up a basic Pokemon that has damage counters on it, that could be really good, but we also leave ourselves vulnerable by having only the 30 to 80 HP based on the way that we're playing the game. Now the second attack here, Calamity Storm, is the same exact cost, however it does say 100 damage plus as the output. The effect of the card states, you may discard a stadium in play. If you do, this attack does 120 more damage, making this a dark attacker hitting for up to 220 damage, which is still really great here, and this can be used over and over again. 
Now it does have a glaring weakness of brass here, which we could see grass get a little bit better being that Charizard was the staple card from Obsidian Flames, and that is also weak to grass Pokemon as well. There are also regular Pokemon cards revealed in this mechanic for Ancient and Future, like Screamtail, Brute Bonnet, Iron Bundle, and Iron Moth. Out of these, they've shown us all art rares as well of Brute Bonnet and Iron Moth. So not only will you have powerful new cards to play with, but they'll look amazing too. If we dive deeper into Screamtail, honestly, Screamtail is one of the better cards I've seen because Gardevoir will still be a deck. Roaring Scream here as the secondary attack states that this attack does 20 damage to one of your opponent's Pokemon for each damage counter on this Pokemon. Being it's a basic Pokemon, you can add Bravery Charm to it, and it has 90 HP. This can be loaded up essentially anywhere between 8 damage counters without knocking it out, or with a Bravery Charm, 12 damage counters using Psychic Embrace. I don't know about you, but I'm doing math in my head. 12 times 2 is 24, and if we add a 0 to that, that's a whopping 240 damage that is able to be sniped onto your opponent's board. Now you can hit not only the active Pokemon, but also bench Pokemon with Roaring Scream as the attack. Honestly, this card was the best reveal out of all the cards that we'll see here in today's video. Move over to Brute Bonnet, which is an ancient Pokemon card. It does have the ability Toxic Power. Once during your turn, if this Pokemon has an Ancient Booster Energy Capsule attached, which means that we are going to get some other type of tool cards that are going to be able to be used here. But it says you may make both active Pokemon poisoned. Now, what does this mean? When both Pokemon are poisoned, that means that maybe this isn't the best Pokemon at all, but it also means that maybe we're going to get some switch mechanics out of this new set that help this Pokemon poison your opponent's active, then switch back. We did see that with the Galarian Slowking back a few sets ago, where it was able to poison the active Pokemon and then had a pretty easy retreat with some of the stadiums and energy cards that were in the set as well. If we do go back to something like an expanded format, we will get the Hiding Darkness energy back from the beginning of Sword and Shield. So maybe we do see Expanded come back and that's just me huffing the copium that we may get a new format back in the upcoming year. Now, if we look at this lackluster attack, it does say Rampage Hammer for 120 damage. During your next turn, this Pokemon can't attack. Really not a whole lot of damage here, and for the high energy cost, it doesn't seem like it's a great card, but I do have to see if maybe that toxic power does something in the format. We'll take a look at Iron Bundle here as a future type Pokemon. Once during your turn, if this Pokemon is on your bench, you may switch out your opponent's active Pokemon to the bench with this Hyper Blower ability. So this is pretty good here where you're actively gusting your opponent's bench Pokemon to the active, but it does state below, if you do this ability, discard this Pokemon and all cards attached, which could be pretty cool. Again, you're gusting something up with a basic Pokemon and then getting it out of the way so maybe you can go ahead and attack into it. Now let's take a look at the attack on this Pokemon. If the defending Pokemon is an evolution Pokemon, it can attack during your opponent's next turn. So this could be really good when we see these stage one and stage two Pokemon come into the meta. I do think that there's a lot of basic Pokemon still in the format that will stop this Pokemon from being good right out of the gate. However, it could be a great card, no pun intended, in future formats. We'll take a look at the final reveal here of Iron Moth. Now, Iron Moth, 130 HP basic Pokemon, has the ability Thermal Reactor. Once during your turn, when this Pokemon moves from your bench to the active spot, you may move any amount of fire energy from your other Pokemon to it. So this is pretty cool here. However, it only has the Heat Ray attack here that does 120 damage for two fire and a colorless energy. During your next turn, this Pokemon can't use Heat Ray. So it can slap for 120 damage as a fire Pokemon, which is great in something like the Charizard deck, as well as maybe some other fire decks that we'll see in the future. Again, with the two retreat cost, it still begs on my mind that maybe we'll have some sort of retreating item 
and or stadium come into play at some point. Being that the thermal reactor acts as a victory road or a burning road ability, I think that maybe somewhere along the line we'll get something to ramp this up even further. So I'd love to see some of the item cards that were going to be coming out in these new sets. And if that wasn't enough to get you excited in 2024, the Scarlet and Violet trading card game brings back Ace Spec cards, which was last seen in the black and white series of the card game. Ace Spec cards pose significant power, but come with a limitation. In the original black and white series, Ace Spec cards adhere to a rule that restricts your deck to containing only one Ace Spec card. So get ready for some serious power with these cards, but you do have the downside of only containing one A spec card in an entire 60 card deck. I love A spec cards, there's so many to choose from, but I know that Computer Search was probably one of the most iconic cards, being that you can just discard cards from your hand and search your deck for any cards. If we think back to how broken Arceus V was to go and search for two cards in your deck, and how that's been used since the card's been released, we can only imagine if we get back computer search here, how amazing that card will be as well. Well, I hope you're as excited as I am for all of these new cards and what they could mean for us in the future formats as well. Thank you so much for watching this video here today and getting my thoughts on these brand new revealed cards. We'll catch you next time here on The Shuffle Squad. You made it to the end. Thank you so much for watching this entire video from The Shuffle Squad. Honestly, from the bottom of our hearts, we appreciate each and every person that supports our content, watches what we have going on every single day, every single week, even from time to time, and uh, continuously allows us to have a forum to project our creative content towards the Pokemon TCG community. So if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and even leave a comment to help boost the YouTube algorithm. That being said, we'll catch you with our next video. Thanks again. Take it easy.